we start with our back and our muscles of our core reaching, I want you to be sure that you have your belt um, connected. So I have a wide loop. And then when I'm sitting in front of my bolster with the sacrum, well, you might not even get a feel like it's a sacrum um, touchdown because it's going to be this arch. So it's kind of interesting that we seem to think that all this is holding us up, but you're creating this, um, this rhythm of movement in your spine the whole time. So as you put your blocks under your legs, even if your knees touch the ground, I would recommend you do this for your SI joint so you're not cranking on that and gripping it over and over. Um, we take our belt to our low space around the feet. Actually, oops, I'm taking it across. I'm twisting the belt so it reaches over the top of my feet. And it really does scoop around to the bones at the top of the foot. And for some of us, we'll feel like our feet really um, kind of nicely push together without like a, a grip. The belt does the work. And if your belt feels like it's too tight, then you get the buckle near you so you can loosen it up. Feel like it's, it's a grippingness, but as you lower back and your height is underneath your head, you have a little bit of a blanket, you decide the height of this blanket. Once your brain is able to settle back into the support, the idea in this practice is called um, balanced spaciousness, right? So noticing the balance of the body touching down and wriggle around until you feel that feature of kind of coordinated stillness. And the blocks might need to get a little higher. I think the one issue with uh, turning your blocks and tilting them is there's the potential they slide out or all of a sudden it pops out. And then that's a, quite a distraction from restorative uh, nature. So you might be sure that your blocks are steady under your legs. One never knows, see if you can do a good test on that. And then align a sandbag either below the sternum or go sand free. Okay, complete choice. If you happen to have a couple sandbags, you can put one on each thigh. So it's at the top of that thigh inner band. And if you're going with the sand on the rib cage, we will get a feeling of the breathing musculature when we have that pressure and that weight applied to the breathing muscles, which is clearly going to be mostly the intercostals here. So explore whether the arms are spatially reaching behind you. Get a feel of the rotation of the shoulder back. And that may be something new for you today to sense is the shoulder rotation as if you're trying to get little parts of each side of the back of the blade to squeeze down into the bolster and they don't get like a complete grip like you, you don't have that musculature in that back space like you would with a hand to grip something but there's no reason why you can't work on feeling that space in the shoulders touch back and push and then with the next breath or so, the exhalation experience, you kind of forget that energetic uh, drive and things start to get into balance and symmetry. So bring the mind in towards the experience of breathing, noticing the areas that you feel, breath, lift, and lower, perhaps the breath is in the higher parts of the lungs, or maybe your breath is felt purely in the belly basin. And exploring which of those regions brings you to, towards uh, peace, some calm, and likely one will be more comforting for you. So either the breath moving up high into the upper lungs, maybe gives you a feeling of 
inner brightness or lift and maybe the breath in a lower abdominal space is calming for the digestive system. And since that area is kind of the second uh, brain, right? The, the abdominal area, the organs in that space, allowing that to move with the breath, to massage that space. You can't really do that with your brain so much, right? When you're breathing, you don't necessarily feel that space move, but you certainly can feel that second brain in the belly move with the breath. So you're kind of lulling it towards calm movement. So let's take a few moments just in the quietude of breathing. Shoulders releasing back, facing the breath. Now feeling the connection of the eyes resting back, kind of back through the brain. And so quickly they can blink open or have kind of a sharp uh, looking experience. If you can let that be fairly soft through the practice as often as possible. Okay, and as we move through the shoulders resting and the chest gradually opening, and it's a pretty small uh, open process in this pose, right? It's not a dramatic chest opener. It's very kind of in between a middle path. So we'll move any sand away and take a lift of your hands. So they could lift over your chest and feel the arms actual length that is apparently going to move your back muscles when your hands go up. They could go behind you as well. So get a feel for these two different directions. I imagine these are the two best choices for feeling the expression of the the side walls of the rib cage. So even if I do choose my arms to go straight up, it's not necessarily lesser of a side body pose. It might feel a little bit more kind of comprehensive and um, centering for some. So feel the connection of your arms separated, right? They usually spend their day doing that. They're not necessarily together, but they have that connection in the center band. So we're gonna work a bit in the next few moments on some kind of intricate hip and leg patterns. So what I want you to, to claim is that your back is on the bolster, right? So if I move my arms behind me, I feel kind of that weight and the area of my neck that's connected to the blanket, it feels not exactly sure if this is the right height. So this would be a good time to feel when your arms move back feel when they're over straight to the ceiling, and then assess is this blanket, is it high enough for you? So if you need to um, turn the blanket and make it a little higher so it's a higher uh, padding under your head, or maybe you want less, that's another idea too, is you could push back the blanket and then lengthen it out so there's less. You, you might be fine where you're at. But let's process the arms to move down and then unbuckle, and slide the belt so that you actually have the feet separating now and have the belt free from under your back. Okay, so you're gonna actually need to get that belt in easy access. And then lift up the right leg and cross the right ankle to the left knee, okay? So as that right thigh has this external opportunity of rotating outwards, it's hooked onto the knee, right? So you have this kind of safe uh, bet that the hip is going to stay um, in this close pattern to the, the pelvis. So if you have a block or a ball, or you could actually use your sandbag next to your left um, hip as well, you're gonna place that outside of that left hip and then venture 
into leaning your body weight. Be sure there's not too much clutter besides the left side, besides whatever's under your leg. You're gonna lean the body weight into that ball, block, or sand. And then as you work a bit, if it is a ball, you can kind of make a little bit of uh, movement opportunity going back and forth, kind of swishing, a little windshield wiper pattern. And loosen up the track, especially of your uh, front of your hips, but the back of the pelvis is kind of sequestered a little bit, right? You've got the bolster. So go to a still point when the leg is moving over to the left and it's kind of mushing into the object besides the left leg. If it's a ball, you really let your body weight relax into it. Hold onto the right knee with the left hand and see if you can let that leg be motioning over to the left side. That's important on this one today. Right hand could be relaxed. I'm gonna just let it be next to me. And so I can really target the focus in my right leg. And also notice the left foot might kind of turn onto its side, stretching through the side of the foot. And then feeling where your weight is into that bolster, so make sure your upper back is centered and relaxed. If you need the blanket, a little bulkier under your head, because you're having challenge, right, with that centering, you can add that bulk. Okay, now let the knee move back to center and get your belt, okay? And reach it, and hopefully you can still keep your head comfortably back, but you might slide your right foot a little bit down so it's crossed over to that left leg, but you wanna be able to hook the belt around the foot. And <laughs> I've played with this a bit with some different tactics in uh, teaching uh, this sequencing, but what I've come up with as of maybe four times working with it in class, I think I prefer it without the block between the legs. So we hold the belt with the left hand and we cross the leg over to the left and that left leg is still pretty much the same as it was last pose. The question I generally have is, um, am I trying to pull my leg to my left leg, the right leg, or am I trying to kind of push down? The, uh, the, the focus is not that, right? You're trying to jet out of the right buttock, jet. <laughs> Um, and reach through the foot that's being held purposely by the left hand, right? So that, that belt is holding on firm to the right foot. But if you decide, this is what we'd used the other day, was we had a block here between the legs, and that made it so that you weren't pushing down into the left legs. I would be a little cautious of if you need that support, use the support of the block. But get a feel of that reach through that right foot with or without the block. Hold the belt with your left hand and then reach the right hand back besides your head. Does that make sense? So the weight of your leg, your left bent leg is, is pressing a little bit into the into the ball, right, it's just as before. Now, it, it might feel like a very imbalanced experience. I find this is a little tense, right? It's a little challenging, perhaps. So work with the back muscles settling on the bolster. If you didn't have any of these props, it would be a real wild and crazy pose, trying to balance your core to do this. So recruit the core muscles, the lower core, it may get be your hand that gets tired the first, the first opportunity to think about it. Okay, now reach the right hand for the belt and help out, help out your belt process. Come back up with both hands now holding the belt. Pull. Okay, so you get a nice connection and pull with both hands and get that direct draw of the roots of the that right foot, the left knee can still be relaxed open on the, on, some of you might even find that you're not using the ball right next to your hip, maybe it's a little farther out under the thigh. But as the um, hands hold onto that belt, you are trying to pull the leg 
back and in. If it's really shaky, then of course you slide your hands down on the belt closer so you have a little more slack. Okay, and then the final pattern here is that I let that right leg actually drop a little bit into the belt. I'm not so focused on the feature of the hamstring, but of this lower core, back of the core, front of the core. Okay, now bend the right knee and then carefully take the belt off by the knee moving open. And then as you switch sides, this is kind of the most um, focused little part today with all the little pieces. So you'll place the ball or sand or block to the outer right hip as that left foot crosses over. That's probably not true actually. There's other things that are analytical maybe. And lean the body weight. Remember you don't have anything onto that foot right now. So it's what we would often call figure four pose, right? So that left foot is crossing now. As you hold the left knee with the right hand, your guide is to draw it over to the right side. I get in the habit of sometimes pulling it towards me. In some, some mixed sessions, I do that. But in this direct attempt, I'm crossing the leg. Right? So the whole femur, you're getting this, this little bit of weight bearing and circulation into that all the way up at the bones here into the attachment of the hip. Yeah, and the left hand could be relaxed. It could be reaching behind you. You can kind of play with that. That's the nice thing about the home practice. You could, you could be snapping your fingers. You could be listening to some music. Or you could focus here. Okay. So feel when you're crossing that left leg. What layer of awareness is in your left lower side, lower quadrant of your back. Okay, if it's pretty dull, you know, it doesn't feel like a very specific pull, that's good. Now, the one thing missing is the connection all the way to the foot here. So when I bring the leg back into kind of step one or crossing one, I'm gonna take the belt under that left foot and then you might play with how do you get this leg to lift with being careful on the knee. So if I pull on the belt and then lift my foot, that's a little difficult on my knee itself. So I'm gonna hold the belt and then let my leg stretch itself straight up. Make sure my kneecap, everything's very supported, okay? And then as you lean to the right side with the left leg crossing to the right, really feel where there's the opportunity especially in these little bits of challenging shapes, right? To reach through the foot on this one, through into the belt and the left arm stretches back. And understandably, it's a bit of an awkward kind of balance. But as you lengthen through your waistband and the left arm could also be down and completely relaxed. So experiencing that kind of zesty sensation through that hip, the reach into the heel. Take a few more slow breaths. It looks like it's a very still pose, but it's fairly frenetic in the, the muscles and the bones, right? So cross over this way. So anything you can cultivate with breathing slow. Okay. Good. Now, if that left leg is comfortable with the straight nature, so we can strengthen tissues, um, feel the movement when you lower the left hand down for certain. And then a little bit of a bend in that left knee because it's required really that you have a little bend in the knee. So you're not, you know, pulling across the side muscles of the knee or actually more of the ligaments when you move up. So you're gonna slide your right hand on the belt a little lower so you get slack. Now when you lift up that leg and then you hold the belt with both hands, pull. 
And obviously it's flex. You don't have to to spend energy on, and on where, how you move your foot with the belt under it. But noticing, right, there's differences from one side to the next likely. Give yourself a little bit of research project, kind of be flowing with pulling and letting the leg move forwards. Feel the arch of the, the rib cage. And that's where we're going with side stage next. So I want you to notice this rib cage option in this pose. Are you working with the ribs or is it all legs? Okay, so as you move that left knee to bending and then take kind of a final um, focus here. Does it feel better for you to pull the leg towards you? Does it feel better to give yourself a lot of slack on the belt, let the leg kind of drop into the belt? You know, it may be an opportunity for you to kind of uh, tone up the lower core. And you still want to find that the back is resting into the bolster. And if it's shaky in the lower core here, don't overdo it, right? Maybe you take the leg a little bit higher up and see if you can recruit those lower belly muscles. No, they're not lower belly bones, right? You don't think of the, the belly as having bones, but there's musculature that's kind of mysterious how to assign it directions. And then bend the left knee and walk the hands towards the foot and then carefully find a way to get the belt off. Everything's staying very um, considerate of your, your alignment. And then when you take that ball aside or if you whatever you have next to your hip, I want you to um, feel the feet wide and then take a block and place it under the back of your pelvis. Now I've slid down my bolster a tiny bit. I can feel it's a little bit off. So I'm gonna move my blanket off with my bolster, the top one, and then lift up my um, hips and then put the block flat under the, my, my rear. And then I can kind of mush back onto the bolster. Of course, you're a little elevated at the, at the tail. So with your tail lifted, feel if you can bring your uh, legs to extending down and then take a full reach wide with the arms and back over. Again, I would have no blanket under your head for this so you aren't crunching at the neck, but you'll feel a little challenge likely with the upper spine. But let's just keep it pure and simple. We're in this full Tadasana shape, right? We've got the, the feet, but the arms are in Hastasana, all right, so they're up, Tadasana, Hastasana, and then reach the heels away, away. That could be more important. If I had my feet on that wall, that would be optimal, but I won't be kind of trying to scoot down to that point. Feel the arms reaching, and then the feet are apart, right? Make sure that you play with taking the feet farther out, assess the difference when they're together, your knees are as close as they can be. Or do you feel most positive in your hips? And then bring your hands up and forward, down, slide your feet in, knees pointy up. Rest the knees together and have the feet a little wider than you might have started with there. So you have a wide stance with the feet. They don't have to be turned in, but the moment here is the knees are touching in together, okay? Feel when you are pressing the knees in, that line of energy from the knee down to the front of the hip bones relaxed. So it's more of leaning in the legs, setting up the support for the bones. If the lower belly is comfortably moving with the breath, encourage that expansion and relaxation of the bell, the belly bell. And now as the feet are certainly parallel, we're gonna move the knees apart. You're gonna push down to your feet now. How does the energy stroll through the legs when you make this transition? So, in some sense, these sessions, um, we're kind of working through the kind of the poetry of the body, right? Trying to get a feel of things moving with some flow and some fluidity. 
So when you push into your feet, be a little cautious how much you force down the feet to get your hips up. See if you can move your shoulder blades back also. So if there's a little more balance. And then when you lift up the hips, you're gonna slide your block out and then actually let the ribs roll on that bolster. Once you roll a little to the side, everything kind of pops up on that right hip. So you're gonna let the right hand roll down, sort of. And then as you come up, turn to your bolster, greet it, and then pivot the bolster so it's across. And then when you bring your knees kind of closer together so it's easier for you to situate your, your blankets behind you, just get them stacked up. Make it a simple process of these two stackings of props. They're both at least a stack of height under your body. And then when this holds you up, you might want to block on the other side of the blankets. Maybe. Some of us, it's kind of half and half, I think. So position your, your left hip down. Placing maybe a ball in the inner right leg, have your sandbag. And then as you're moving to your left side and down, you might get your sandbag on before you lose both sides to help you balance it out. So get a feel for that right leg touching down onto the ball or block. If you don't have any issue in that tissue or just don't like the ball, then you just go without. But as you lean down to that left side, or maybe you just kind of drop into it, but feel where the weight of your head tilts. Okay, so I want to find the right amount of tilt. This blanket stack is too low for my head tilt because I feel a little wary of that. So you want to feel like this is supported. It's not cranky on your neck, it's, it's elevated your head is elevated. So as you reach your hand back to the floor or the block, you will work towards that waistband, receiving that length. Okay, so, you know, find where the left leg is going up towards the bolster, feel that touch, and feel where the right waistband, maybe it feels more the length of it versus horizontally, but Explore the right arm's movement, whether it's opening or it's back and over your head onto the block or it's besides you. And let the experience of breathing start to dominate the, the, the pose layers of letting go. We're doing a scan of everything that's holding back, especially if it's your neck. You might start with this bulky blanket and then find, oh, maybe it was, it's better for me to roll a little bit on the back or turn my head down on the inside of that ear. So get a feel rather than, rather than how it looks, you're going for feeling comfortable with your neck. Because it's a pretty big neck stretch. It's that ear to shoulder kind of stretch. Ribs, costal movement of the breath in the ribs. Okay, now with that arm and leg, reach out of the center piece of the body. You know, if that left arm is over, then I want you to move it either opening the chest towards the ceiling or move that right hand upper arm down to the bolster. And then feel how that right leg is reaching back, even if you don't move the leg again you can still feel how the pelvis is reacting here. So I think we're going to work a little bit with that reaction. What my, my, my sequencing was going to be, we come straight up to sitting, but 
I think this whole rib cage movement is important to, to work with the movement of that. So we'll take the sand away. Of course, you can stay in any of these shapes longer if you like. We'll keep, kind of keep it in flow. But when I turn down towards my bolster now, and I turn so your life are going to be facing the other direction for a few moments, but you're going to turn so that you're on hands, knees, just that, and you're into cat cow pattern. And it might be kind of wagging your tail too, depending on how you feel in your waist. But where the hands open, the palms wide, well, the fingers wide, that's the key. The palms can only do what they can do. But as you round through the spine, feel the connection of the rib cage lifting up and then arching the back. So feel the chest move forward, the tail move back. But clearly moving your rib cage, your spine. And if there's like a feeling of bracing in your back, Right now, as long as you're out of a brace, right, you want to try to get that fluidity and really find that magic connection of breathing and moving your spine. I can't think of anything where you can breathe and move your spine quite like this type of shape, cat-cow. This is at least where I feel the support. Now, if your knees don't like this, that's another thing, right? You might need to be on a blanket underneath your knees. If your wrists don't like it, you could be down onto the elbows or the elbows on blocks. So just a few more cat cows. This is not very technical. It's the movement warm up through the spine, okay? So next time you find that load in neutral, like your right kind of splat in the center of things, turn the toes under, lift up the knees and Alternate bending your knees in the very beginning of this kind of walking your dogs and then get a feel when the knees bend that the, the hips kind of, they kind of move a little bit. They're, it's not a bouncing hip positioning, but they do kind of trot a little bit in a shape, very quietly moving in the hips. So take a few more of those each side. Yeah, really work through the foot, the toes, the ball, the heel maybe touches down. You get the whole sensation of the footing. Okay, now next time you feel the heels lift, both of them lower down onto your knees. And then we will take one, actually leave the blankets, but turn so that you're sitting on your bolster. That kind of worked okay. Got it. We're able to do some spine curls and then take a, uh, a sand or block let's see you're going to need that other block too okay so place that one block to the left side of your mat and then you're going to put your stand in and you're in a right leg forward cross-legged position so you're seated right foot forward everyone's going to feel different with this block under the the foot maybe we'll all feel the same i don't think so but I'm gonna put a block straight in front of the pelvis so it's lined up, so my foot is on top. And the reasoning is supporting my knee, but also to keep this inner lift, right? There's a tendency to kind of round roundabout. So when I have that foot up, I'm gonna place the sand on the right, really high up on the leg, so it feels like it's really kind of on my, it's hooked on my pelvis, okay? I'm really kind of pushing it in there. So I've got my sand to that space. And then as you work your ribs to the left, you're going to lean to the left side and then find when you begin to feel this weight bearing into the right ankle that you get a block on that side over to the left and probably high block is going to work best. Of course, we're all different heights. So some of you will find now that I got to be on a flat block, right? If you're already feeling like it's too jolty in the shoulder. So flex the right foot so you get a feel of this ankle um, movement into moving the foot to flexing. And if this does not feel good to your ankle, your knee, your hip is too much, then put your foot on the floor without the block, of course. It's an opportunity. So this rib cage kind of cycles down 
into this left side reaching. And it's actually a forward bend motion. So we're moving downwards. Of course, some of us, the back's gonna really round in this position. So I want you to try to extend out of your back, reaching versus rounding. Breathing. Okay, if the left knee is really high up, that's okay. You can put a ball under it. You can let it be a little bit more freestanding. You don't have to pull your left foot all the way to the bolster. Okay, now reach the right arm up. So it's kind of, it's hovering upwards, right? It's in the side, side towards the side of your head. But for me, that's too much of my shoulder to bring it that high. So I just lift it so I see it in my vision. I know it's lifted up. Okay. And then you're going to reach your right arm to the right side of your back. So kind of to that, like if you had a pocket in your pants, right? It, you could slip your fingers to that space. So it really, that's the direction. Where is the alignment? Well, it's in the pocket of your pants. Okay. So now we come up a little bit. Now this is a little maneuvering for your coordination. So you take your block with your left hand, reach it out to the left side. I don't know if you can see my block here, but you know it's going out to the left side. And then you're gonna turn your ribs towards the right. And just take a simple moment here of that turn. Nothing too advanced here with the rib cage. Well, gentle is advanced generally, right? Gentle is the new advance. Okay. So feel the fibers in this right side. I mean, you can massage them if you feel up to that, right? You kind of notice these fibers. We're going to be wringing this out, this flesh, but clearly that goes back to the kidneys as well. So when you push off that block and come up, I want you to lift the left arm up. That kind of works okay, actually. Lift the left arm, turn the left palm towards the back. And then feel how, if the whole arm moves, or is it like just the elbow, or maybe even not just the elbow to the wrist turns. But as the left hand pats to, that, to your back, you're gonna bring the right hand across to the left elbow and nudge it back. And nudge back your elbow and experience the tricep. I mean, how can you not hear? Yeah, if it feels rather tense in that space, or you could say the muscle there feels short. Okay, it's a short, it's, it's simply gripped up, right? It's naturally gonna be tight because of how it hangs out during the day, literally. Okay, but we're doing this to help with our, our rotation coming up. So you can wriggle a little bit like you're kind of tipping side to side with your ribs. And then just let go of that elbow. Kind of warms it up, the whole tricep. Put the sand on the left side. And then as the left leg is down now, you're gonna scoot your left foot towards the bolster. And I would encourage you to try this twist with either of these options. The foot is on the block, door one or you're gonna take your, your leg and cross it, use your left hand to cross your leg to the right side of that left leg, and then go in towards the twist. So you're gonna to turn to the right, bring the right hand back, and maybe you need to kind of pull your blankies in if you'd like to have a little something. And either hook the left elbow to that right leg and rotate through the waist, and especially, the abdomen is relaxed. I know it's twisting and toning and massaging the organs, but start with a, well, don't start. You've already gotten past the start, but let the abdominal muscles work their way around the rib cage movement and the belly contents stay relaxed. Breathing slow. If you can really truly slow down your breath, especially on this position. Because speeding it up isn't going to make the pose better. 
or more advanced. It's the opposite, right? In restorative, or actually in yoga, right? Or in general, it's not going to make things better. So slowing it down. Okay, so with that turn to the right, we're going to come back in center. I want you to counter twist. So right arm to the inner right leg and then take the turn to the other side. If it feels really kind of heavy duty pressure cycle in the leg when you go this direction on the right leg, then I would recommend you hold the knee instead of hook the elbow. I feel a little bit more pressure that moves into my knee. So I just have a little more mild twist. Right? And some of us might find we can push the elbow on the inner knee and go for it. But make sure the right foot is on the floor. If it's up, then you probably are better off with your foot on the block for now to get these spaces open. And then unwind and take the sand off that left leg. And we're going to change to feet together, two feet together. Otherwise, it's not together. And as you're in Baudha Konasana, you have your, your soles close. But feel the concentration of the, the knee bounce, right? Oftentimes called butterfly pose for a reason. And when we're here, can we keep the ribs moving forward? And spine moves in, of course. Lift the shoulders and roll them back. If possible, let your eyes close and just experience the kind of the bob and the lift of the knees without pushing them down. And the movement through the thighs, moving open equally, and the shoulders just rolling back. Okay, tilt your ear to your shoulder, anyone will do, any ear. And then the other side, ear to shoulder. And feel the connection of the neck, the connection of the brain down into the, right, the neck is that connection from brain to shoulder. So it, it can have a little bit of tension, huh? And then once you've done both sides of that lean, you're gonna take the block away from front and then slide your feet forward and just get kind of cozy with sliding off of your bolster, turning to your right hip and getting ready for side stage with the right hip down. So simplicity here, but this is all rather analytical and practice today, huh? Okay, well follow through with what you want to. If anything's getting to detail you can pass on some of those details but keeps us studying here so i've got my sand it doesn't feel quite the same on the side for some good reason but i'm going to work with that so i got it on my hip you can place the sand anywhere but here's the thing with that overhead pattern if you have a block and you like to put that overhead for your hand noticing that the height uh, matter. So it's okay if you want to move the block to the higher height and see what well, does that help out with your arm circulation all the way through that side beam. I feel it's pretty nice to have the block high. I know I can go low, um, but if you do find that trying a different height works, makes it easier. Go with what's complementary to your circulation needs right now. And then that right leg close to the bolster. As your spine centers in its side reach, let your eyes maybe close and settle your head, whether you're on the back of your head or you're on the side of the brain. Ribs expand and relax into their center space. You'll feel good. The movement pattern of inhale. And this is one where I notice the inhale feels fuller and longer than the exhale by far for me. It's a lot of long work to get in the shape and try to breathe deeply and slowly and specifically get each of the in and out breath operating in tandem. So 
if it's dynamic and it's different when you're on your back, on your side, when you're sitting, that's a good sign, right? Your vitals, the good vital sign. So work with that dynamic and experiment with how do you orient your legs so you're comfortable in your knee. I don't want anyone to find this is causing more knee stress than, than just feeling the leg stretching and the hip stretching. So explore, if your left leg can stretch a little farther back and go for it. It doesn't hurt anything, getting a little more circulation it is helpful. Breathing. Now, if there's a possibility your brain waves can visualize something right now, uh, we're going to visualize that cat cow motion. Of course, I can't see if we're visualizing anything, but um, you know, that's a little, it's still working part of your brain, right? So you're visualizing that motion of cat cow rounding and arching the spine. And who knows, maybe you create a little bit of movement in your hip or your pelvis, you know, really microscopic movement that you, you couldn't detect so much even when you're sensing your body. Subtle sensation. Okay, so this time when we move along, we're gonna go right up to the sitting shape. Okay, so my left arm is gonna move my block over towards the side and then my sand. Now, when you move, be, be a little bit kind of creative. You certainly don't wanna move, move in like a choppy way. So you wanna to try to flow with the rib side and then come up and then feel how this left side is certainly been kind of sparked right of awareness so i come up to sit and then i go right into it right i'm going to go right to my block under my foot this is pretty critical for the balance so sand on the upper left leg up to the hip and then taking your block to the top well kind of the side the right side of your mat over so you keep this connection and I, I think this is especially important if you start to come up and there's there's a little bit of kind of achy short side feeling like it, it's cramped up so go back to fluid motion through that left side just like you did lying on the bolster on the side although we're not lying on the bolster like in that position right now so it's completely an option for you if you don't want to use your block Right, if this works better to feel the floor. Get that feel of moving the breath. Sometimes you get into a, a rather deep stretch and you are having trouble tugging on the breath, kind of the strings of breath, right? It's almost like they get more labored. So if it is like that, you might need to move your block a little closer or your hands closer to you. And then let's try this. We're going to purposely bring that left hand to the left side of the, the hip and then slide the block besides your right side. So I'm over with my block on the right side on the floor besides my bolster. And I'm gonna slide that block out and then lean to that right side. Now you could put your elbow on the block it's kind of satisfying. And then as that left arm maybe lifts up a little bit, doesn't have to be a lot, but get a feel of that reach on through that left arm. Okay, and it could be behind your back so that it works in your waist. Okay, so feel movement and just kind of play with it. Your left tricep has already been worked a little bit. So you might find some variation of moving your elbow could be useful, turning your head down to the right side. Can the breath actually move you? Kind of feel the ribs move with the breath. Mm 
Okay, now when you lift up that left arm back behind you for a certain now, you're gonna, it's almost like a seated cartwheel of sorts, right? And you're moving that left arm back and then you come up with the right arm and then bend through that elbow. In fact, you could stay with the arm up, the hand turns back, bending and put that hand to your back, reach the left hand to the right elbow and stretch the, the upper right arm back. So it's the, the piece from the shoulder to the elbow, but there's some interesting tissues in there, aren't there, to kind of work through. And my hope is that you'll feel that sensation through the tricep, okay? And then as your arm goes back up on that right arm, open out the arms, both wide, okay? Take a sandbag over to the right thigh, and then you're gonna scoot your right foot in towards the bolster, right knee on the ground. Cross the left leg over the right leg and then take that twist. So we had that opportunity last side. Of course, we balance it with this side, but I always find this kind of tricep warm up um, can be helpful just to get some more range of motion in my arm. But you know, arm range of motion is, is really dependent on your waist range of motion, your flexibility in your torso right now. So feel how the torso motions to the left and it's a horizontal breathing pattern. So it's the width of the rib cage that you're working towards, just like you were on your side. And as the left hand comes back to the blanket, see if you can stabilize and center, right? And emphasize that relaxed abdomen. Try to relax your abdomen, releasing that lower belly, and then feel where you're using your muscles, right? The right arm. If this is really weary on your arm, then hold on to that left leg and then feel the left shoulder try to move back. And then get a moment where you're in the twist and you're just trying to figure out how can I get a little more comfortable? Maybe you turn your head. Maybe you have to kind of reach down from the, uh, kind of the, the basement of the pose, right? And then kind of inhale the length and up. Exhale, to rotate. Inhale the lengthen. Exhale to twist. Should feel like a challenging pose the whole time. It's definitely a, a workout. You know, relax the arm muscles, turn back forward. Counter twist, left arm either holds the knee or stretches and kind of strikes the full reach. And if this left leg gets kind of slippery, it kind of slides away, then you might want it to slide a little forward when you turn to the right. You know, see if you can avoid forcing um, the leg crossing. And then work with the musculature you have in your back when you turn to the right. Breathing, lifting up through the spine. Great. Okay, now as you unwind, we're gonna slide that sand away. And let's take a, um, a pigeon pose right now. Let's take a pigeon with that right leg forward. So I'm gonna scoot in my blanket. Uh, so I have a blanket, one behind me. You could have two. It's not gonna be a problem if you have two. But as you move the left leg back, you kind of get a feel of all these uh, nooks and crannies of movement for your hip. Now this hip is gonna open in the front. So clearly it's a right hip pose right now, but the front of the left thigh reaches, the right knee is open. And then as you lower down, you can bring your elbows down. You can kind of touch onto the block and lower your head onto it or make a pillow with your hands for your head. But manage the reach from your right knee to the back of the hip. So movement might be key for you. Maybe even kind of letting your elbows be down in a sphinx pose and kind of wobbling a little side to side with your circulation. And then if you get a feel for centering, 
It's likely it feels there's different sensations on the right and left side for this shape, right? The legs are in the same position, so it wouldn't be balanced in this moment, but it could bring you to balance. So that back leg can stay where it's at. You can also bend the back leg as if you're moving your heel a little closer towards your seat and be so mindful so there's not going to be as much forceful. That's interesting. Mindful, forceful in your practice. Um, and that left foot needs to be kind of relaxed for that to happen. Let the back leg release completely, depending on your spine movement right now. We're gonna come back to hands and knees, two hands, two knees. So lean your weight back to your seat. And as you come up with your hands underneath your shoulders, you'll let the toes hook under. And then as I kind of glide my leg onto the bolster, you might like that operating pattern. So maybe it isn't hands and knees, it's thighs and hands. So you can merge down on the bolster and it's across your mat. So it's kind of pushing up into your hips and it likely gives some help into your back muscles. Still a lot of energy in your hands. Now come back to table and then move your bolster straight forward and out of your waist waist way, okay? Have your arms to reaching. So you're, you're being with your knees wide, your waist stretching back, hovering over ground, of course. And then as your arms come out to the hands on the edge of your mat, you'll round your back. So chin tucks to chest, and then carefully reach your ribs forward. And so you have a real wide stance with your hands and maybe your knees and let the waist lengthen, okay? Take this in both directions. So you're gonna reach your hips back and get a feel of your spine motioning back because of your arms dependent openness, right? It's wide. Maybe your forehead touches down and then rounding. Now, I would encourage you to do this layer of movement for a good 30 seconds here going forward. We will probably each have a different need to bring maybe our head and touch down for longer. And some of us will wanna keep movement. So if you'd rather stay in like, let's say a child's pose, you might spend the rest of this pose cycle resting back in child's pose. So if you wanna rest back, you can put your forehead down, hands are wide, seat towards the feet, or maybe you're moving forward and back instead. Okay, so give a few more moments, but create that reach through your torso. Now there's always further to go with the waist stretching, but we certainly wanna still feel like that waist bundle can move in all directions. So it's not like you would want it to be this completely lengthened um, piece in the center, right? You want it to be able to broaden, and also length and reach. Okay, so let's go ahead and shift back to our table land. And then toes under, downward dog, a full downward dog pattern. So you're gonna reach your heels towards the floor. And of course you might walk out your feet, but if you take them a little wider, find the width that is balancing for your knees and then press the floor away and let your head relax between the arms. Sitting bones reaching back and up, hands open. Walk on back to your feet or walk your feet towards your blanket as well. And then meet in the feet, meet in your feet, a feet meet, okay. So as you lower your waist down into this forward fold and you have that standing fit feature of letting the blood flow towards the brain and the head below the heart. So we either hold the elbows and we let the arm flesh stretch or we hold the backs of the legs. 
So experiment with the lift of your hips and the spilling of the spine right out of the pelvis. Give that experience and let the elbows reach out wide. Head maybe nod side to side. Really let the weight of your head relax. So if you need to do any more kind of pulling on the legs or if you feel better with holding the elbows, it's dependent on the, the real benefits of this are dependent on your ability to let your head kind of go, the weight of your head to release. So if the feet need to go wider so you feel a nice base of support, You know, fine tune the reach of the knees to bending. And then let go of the elbows. And then satisfy the motion of your head kind of bowing down towards the floor. All the way trickling through the crown of your head. Hands are going to reach. Now, likely you're going to feel like you've got to lift your head to to, to feel safe. So this is an interesting one uh, to work with the spine movement. So I would be very kind of cautious of that swinging that head forward, the chin movement, the jaw, the neck. So you have, you've been in dog pose before, so you trust yourself a little bit. So bend your knees, well, you're the one living in this. And so you likely might play a little with, can you move your arms forward without pulling your, your head and your jaw and all that tightening. So just get a feel of reaching, like you're a creature that roams around on all fours. You're gonna to try to reach to your back without pulling your chin forward and then scoot your feet back, your knees down and then take a bolster. You gotta take this aim, reach for the bolster, slide it straight center spine wise under your core. And then as you reach down, you're gonna let the belly rest on top and see if you can still manage that connection into your spine with your arms a little bit back. So I'm not asking you to pull your, um, the lift of your neck up. I want you to find what's a natural length for your neck here, but interesting to move your elbows by your side. So kind of squeeze them into the sides. Let the hands still be on the floor. If you like to do things that are a little more challenging with this position, you might lift up to locust pose, but feel how that abdomen pressure changes your breathing connection. So you're gonna use that bolster to strengthen into the midsection. It's like a reverse weight, isn't it? When you're going against gravity in your back bend. Hands on the floor for certain now. And then sweep the chest muscles forward like you're trying to branch forward through the belly, elbows by the sides. Hands are gonna slide a little forward so that you can easily, this means easily lift up your head. Now, if you lift up and it feels tight in the shoulders, like tighter than you would like, or your back muscles, let your hands move out wider on the mat and see if you can come up there. So a wider stance with the legs would help as well, okay? Now we're gonna keep this connection going. So when you lower your ribs down, firm into the bolster, hands slide back, toes under, lift up, and then step the right foot to the top right corner. This will be a very short open lunge. So instead of gathering a lot of props under your hands, it's a few moments. Okay, slide the right foot, right knee back, and then take the left foot up. And as you reach through the hip on that right front thigh down, see if you can move your brain so it's centered as if the crown is going straight forward, not trying to push it towards the sky. Lengthen in that front beam of the waist. Okay, so my hope is that you're gonna get that front beam kind of like a, a very steady um, rod of strength here in the front beam of the waist. 
And then as you lean back into your right leg for a brief moment, you're gonna turn your bolster to the side across the mat, so horizontal, and then walk your left foot across towards the right side of your mat to pigeon. And as the left knee opens, be careful that, you know, I mean, be careful, that's kind of a, a alerting thing to hear <laughs> in your class, but feel the knee when it opens. You know, if the left foot needs to get closer to the bolster so that you can find some ease around the rim of the hip and then to the SI joint, that left side. So you want to feel like this opens. But if you've done a pose like, let's say, frog pose, I mean, we're trying to get this back thread to reach out into the hip and then lower that knee. And I don't think this pose would work unless your knee was down. And that would be a little suspenseful if it was up. So if it's a tough one and it's just really grippy, grippy in the hippie, grippy hippie, you might rock a little side to side. You might just kind of not bounce, but get a feel of some subtle movement. And it's likely uh, that the tail can move, tailbone area moves, but your sitting bones really can't kind of swish side to side. They're, they're gripped up in a shape. So notice and center. So it's a good daily habit. Notice and center wherever it is you are. Okay, now where that right thigh is motioning back from the hip root. Okay, now I mentioned a little bit about the, the crown of the head movements there. So we're gonna path our motion into legs up. And this, these sequences really are now at this kind of level of, you've got to have attended this for a while to kind of follow, right? Um, it's got its own little bit of a, of, a, of a language of movement. So when I reach the weight back to that right leg, if you're going to try bending the back knee, go for it. If you've got, this knee has got some ish, tissue issues, just be real mild. And if it borders on, discomfort, then you've got to back off no matter what. It's just important to do that. Honor where it's at. Notice if there's a, a tense spot through that left glute. Okay, now the leg circulation has been really kind of uh, sparked up now, right? So we're going to lean to the left, lower the right leg down, walk over with your hands and swing the right leg forwards. Okay, we're still there. We're still here. And then come on to your, your back body with your, um, I'm not sure exactly where all your props need to be exact in this moment, but I know that the blanket's behind you. Your sandbag is probably in your lap to keep it easy going. So when I lean forward, I'm in the center of my bolster. I know most of you are probably already getting to it faster than me, but I try to get my seat really far forward, almost to the point that it slides onto the floor. And then when I lower back, I still slide farther down. And then when I'm on my back, my seat is on that edge. And then as my spine lowers and loosens up to the floor, and the knees pop up. And then once they're popped up, so we, we generally used to do these patterns where we put sand on our shins and all that, and if you have really sturdy knees and they're durable, they don't mind this, you can certainly do this kind of pattern to get ready. Um, but it is pulling the knee, right? It's, so some of us just have durable knees and it doesn't bother. But I would recommend if you're here in this position with your knees bending, be sure that you really are on that bolster. Truly, pelvis is up, okay? Now, as I, put the sand on my feet, I'm gonna stretch my feet so that they are kind of able to push the sand back up. So you want some distance with your feet. And having anything between the knees is up to you. I mean, if you wanna put a ball 
Um, I don't find it real necessary, but some really do like that. I, I like to keep it kind of pure and simple because it's enough already for the circulation dynamic. And as I flex the feet, this is a real kind of drain fluid in the legs and also drains kind of this postural habit I have of standing on my feet. <laughs> so have a blanket under your head as much as you like. If you don't want to use a blanket under your head, you don't have to, and you could make the blanket a real sliver. So it's just a very mild padding. You could do that option, okay? Now the elbows are open in cactus, and some people have trouble getting one arm down, the other's a little bit, um, it easily drops, so it's not symmetrical for all. So I would work with feeling the elbows maybe touch towards each other, like you do this kind of funny move where you bring your arms in, like instead of hands, you know, clapping, it's elbows tapping. You have that position, and then it could be shaky. You'll move your arms apart, and then as you move them open, you want to keep that balance as far as you know. Yeah, and once they open out, you could slide them a little bit back. Find symmetry in your shoulders. Feel the shoulders resting. Receiving your breath. And empty the lungs. Feel the lower abdomen. Curiously active, like the diaphragmatic strengthening occurs in an inversion, like right, the weight of the abdominal organs pushes on the diaphragm and has to resist and move its natural continuous action all the time. It can't suddenly steer into another way of moving. So we put it in these challenging shapes, whether they're inversions or twists for the, um, the diaphragmatic breathing. It is challenged in those shapes, strengthening the breathing muscles. You know, we'll give ourselves about one more minute with this pure legs up. So not anything that really muddies it. Um, and if the feet get, you know, a little tired out with the sand, you can always remove it and just have the feet out. That's fine. But in the middle of the room, it's a little different equation with the circulation in the hip floor, but it really steadies and supports the balance and the bone density right in the hips here. So we want to kind of keep that sand for that, only for that reason really, is for the bones. And it's grounding. And it kind of keeps you from going to sleep, right? You got to kind of a little bit of a steady uh, concentration with your weight. You know, feel if you can move your feet a little forward. Some of you might already have them forward enough. You can't notice everybody. But if you have your feet flexing, and they move a little forward, go right to that point where it's pre-lower back pressure, right? So if I go too far forward at my angle, it will go away from minus points for my core. It's tightening the back. So I want to feel a little bit of that lower core or you could say kind of plucking the lower core, right? It's really a little bit of pulling on those threads. And that's exactly what we're gonna move into is that lower core. So bending the knees, easeful. So my back gets a little bit more pressure. And as I go slow, I feel the right amount of pressuring into my sides of my back waist, and then I get that sand away. And as you move your knees side to side, you really have the option to put a block between them or not. If it's just kind of going along fine, I think adding a prop is more disruption than 
um, helpful sometimes, especially something going from one to the next with fluidity. But if you like that block, because it gives you a, a steady definition of your legs, that's fine. So you're either here going side to side for about a minute, which is a kind of a long amount of time to do this motion. Um, or you'll have a block between the legs or a ball, a ball. You can make your block into a ball. It'll be a fun little experiment. So as the knees are going side to side, You're going to move the blocker ball away if you have that. If not, no worry. And as your knees squeeze in, it's an opening for the back. So let's find this final spinal with this energetic of, hmm, I don't want to tighten up my back, but when I go into bridge pose, it's going to feel like there's some pressure included. So bring your hands to your, move your hands on the bolster and push it slowly away from under your back forward. So it's down the mat. And then once we let the spine kind of drape itself down, can you feel the knees still into the chest? I want you to try to keep that uh, for a little longer than you might expect. They don't need to be tugged on. Now I can feel where my bolster is. Now if you prefer bridge pose without a bolster, this is your time to kind of slide it over to the right side of your mat and use your hands to kind of push it over or your feet. And those that are going to use the bolster are going to lower the feet down to the bolster. And or you're going to go to the floor with your feet and then push down into that surface and lift up the hips. Try to smoothly move under the back waist through the buttocks like it's a scooping, right? You can tend to be jarring and kind of shove your feet and then just pump your hips up. Let's see if you can scoop under. That's a challenge to make it more fluid. And then lift up the hips. Nothing between the knees. And then find that hip space very strong into the hip bones. And then lower your spine down. And take these drawbridge poses very organically for yourself. So you're going to scoop and lift up your arms and your hips, of course, and move the arms back overhead. And then lengthen the spine and lower down. Very comforting for your spinal column. And you know, one thing you might add, and this is maybe a little bit silly, but it's kind of scooping the arms down and then let them help you lift back and over. I know, this isn't like a dance performance, so <laughs> keep it simple. But you know, sometimes any of that scoopy action helps the spine create that. It's like a Oh, your arms are doing that, then the spine might benefit from that direction. And then let's do one more. So one more draw bridge. So you feel that motion in the hips. It's trying to get fluidity before we do two final crossovers. I want you to get that spine warm. And then when your back has its moment of centering and kind of wide in the back, you know, maybe get your hands so they're at the eyebrows of the buttock area. Right, so where that belt was in the beginning of class, the back, and you want that to, to spread outward so it's not gonna jam into the, um, the tailbone. Okay, now once that is centered, there's always this little spot between that and your rear bones that feels like there's just this microscopic space. And then you'll move anything on that right side of your mat away. If you have a ball, get it. And then kick your bolster to the right side and then as you get it over to that side, go right into this leg crossover and let it be really just however you naturally cross the leg. So you don't analyze it. You get a feel of the leg lifted and crossing and then maybe a ball to the sacrum and maybe a sandbag to that outer left leg. And if you had your sand, uh, you dropped it overhead, that's probably where it is if you can't find it. It happens to me, I look all over and it's behind me, okay? So traction is everything with the sand. If I get it towards my knee, it gives a nice blend of traction for the hip. Reach the left arm back. Isn't this just identical to the first phase of class when we did that cross?
crossover with the leg. It's it's really similar. It's a nice full circle today, kind of with the movements. So that left leg rests to the bolster. If it's not feeling comfortable, you might scoot the bolster downwards, but the leg aims across. It's a crosswords. Right arm could be doing anything. It could be set, uh, trying to figure out how your sandbag should be. It could be scratching your head. You could be resting. But center of the belly, lifting and lowering with the breath. Arm could be open or straight back. We are balancing through the back side of that left hip. So you'll feel that crossing of the leg is purposely giving a little pull, a pulley into the hip muscle. Now, when we switch the sides, I want you to first move anything out from the sacrum and then Keep the legs rather easeful. So it might be windshield wiper, it might be clutch the back of the legs or happy baby pose, but you might just feel naturally if you shift onto your back, maybe your feet come to the floor and you just feel your feet really established in the ground with your spine laying down. That could be a good one too. And then the bolster goes to the left. Part of it is just really finding your, your lines of energy in the body and kind of balancing that. It could be simple as that sometimes. And the left leg down, and it could be bending when you cross the right leg over. You certainly don't have to have that left leg straight. Right? We don't want to try to necessarily point things out like that in the bones. So use all the curve that you can from your hips, okay? And then the sand and the ball and those things. If you don't, um, use a ball, that's fine. You might feel that nothing is necessary. Even that you don't necessarily want to jab a block there to the sacrum, but use what you have and, and then find where that weight is helpful. If there's any kind of weirdness around your knees, you do want to notice what you can do to reduce that pressure at any time. You never know when that'll come up sometimes. But spreading that right arm out so the chest circulation is movement through the bones of the chest open. And maybe your head rolls to the right side. And giving yourself the support that's helpful for your back touching down. Cactus pose might be one some people would use for this. Even if it's easy for you to do cactus, it's a good one to repeat. It'll, it's interesting when you do find times that it doesn't work, that something's kind of up and out of balance in the shoulders or the collarbones, the ribs. It's a good generic, just do it. Breathing, let the belly ride the breath. Now fine tune the circulation in your waist is twisting. And then if we have that option to, option two, to move any object um, that's at the sacrum away first. And then as you guide that sand away, I want you to kind of do a little, a little scan of where you might want to do a final pose. If you want to do legs up the wall, the legs up on a, um, chair or couch, you can do that. Um, I'm going to do bolster bench, Stonehenge, but you might get a feeling of just kind of assessing. I know maybe one or two of you will do a chair shoulder stand, 
but you'll hold the back of the legs and get a feel of rolling up, a spinal roll. And then when you get a feel of your seat, um, lifting up your spine again, find the, the blocks in front. This is for those doing uh, Stonehenge. So we're gonna do our blocks under our bolster. The blocks are mid height and then the bolster also has a blankie on top of that. So I would just roll the blanket up, use the bolster as a, as a base to get that roll. I know you could kind of play with this roll and make it like maybe rolling just a little bit of the blanket and then your calves on there and the feet on the other side you could probably make it more interesting than I thought of. But as you lift up whichever pose you've chosen, right? Legs up the wall, uh, legs up the bolster, body on the chair, You've got your, um, your lift and your feet are in more of a floating position. That's the key is your legs are up. The heels are floating. So balance out the opportunity of a sandbag at the final part, maybe from the belly um, up to the heart. It just is lengthwise. So it kind of mirrors the back. And if you have that ability to kind of squish around your sandbag, you can make it in spots that it feels comfortable kind of pressing onto your bones. It's kind of a nice thing with a sandbag because they're, they're so fluid, right, inside. And then as you have your option to move your arms to open or to cactus, if open lets your back muscles relax more, then go with what's easy for your back not gripping in the shoulders. And then along the way into this final shape, feel where the spine is connected out into the, the growth of movement through the arm channel. And then out through the fingers and then it draws back in towards the meridian, towards the heart and the lungs. And as you grow in the next breath, Feel the breath moving inwards and then upwards through the belly, expanding and exhaling out completely through the mouth. Feel a slow toning through the lower abdomen on each breath. With the eyes in a relaxed state and the brain heavy, to simply pace your breath, four count in, Relax on the out breath. Now, kind of unwind any weight that you have away from the ability to put pressure on your body, feel that there's that intra-abdominal awareness of flowing the breath in the belly. I want to keep that comforting positioning of the breath moving the lower abdominal, even as we come up in a few moments. So try to keep that conditioning of moving the breath that lower diaphragmatic sensibility here, belly breath. And then you might bring your feet right up to the edge of the blanket if you have your bolster bench and the knees open to cobbler's pose. You might decide if you're at the wall, you can also do the same thing. The chair, you could do the same thing too. It can be cobbler's for each pose. Cobbler option. 
Okay, and now the knees are gonna move inwards and you're gonna roll with that positioning of knees moving in. And then as that slides over to the side, let your spine stretch and then let the hands help push you up whatever side you went to. And if you're at the wall, it might take you another few seconds to align back to sitting. But let's find a little bit of collective um, connection, even though you may feel some physical distance here. <laughs> We're still connected. Looks like we are, as I can see. If you want to stay on your back, stay on your back or come on up. But find the line of circulation from your pelvic space and that basin into the, the breath basin of the belly. And then lift up the shoulders and roll them back. And let that continuous rolling motion feel the ribs move forward and the hands land together, either away from the heart or closing in closer as the brain relaxes and bows into your heart center. And as you surrender the breath, exhaling, bowing into the space behind your heart. In gratitude, namaste.